everybody and welcome to the quadcopter review this is part two of our video series and in part two here we're going to get into adding our camera and finishing our setup so as always though let's remember to like comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already there'll be plenty more videos and giveaways to come on the channel this is just a small little build without soldering build because i don't like to show soldering i don't think it's that much fun but uh, again we're going to use this uh this cadix turbo micro s2 and it's using the turbo i and its output is ntsc and it is 5 volt to 40 volt and i got this particular one because the stiz requires me to use a micro camera now first things first when i got into this on the mamba stack um the power lead for me here at the front did not work so what i did was i took that power lead there and connected it to a different 5 volt over here where the vtx would be now remember we snipped that power off our vtx that yashin tx805 and all we used was the ground and camera and then i took my smart audio and brought it over here to the receiver side and added it to tx1 there now other people have not had any problems at all with that you can just use the pads that it shows on there however i did and uh with all the pads on this mama stack there's an easy way around it so uh now we got the camera on and of course right away we run into something easy we go just one more screw and we're all the way there Easy, easy. No! 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 I hate you! I hate my own life! So the problem we ran into was we need to get rid of the OSD on the camera because we're going to use the OSD on Betaflight. And I could swear I got this single button controller in the box, but I have so many on my desk I can't remember, guys. But what you're going to need is one of these five button camera controllers. Uh, Foxier one does work if you got it or the Caddx one if I'm wrong and it came in the box But I swear I got the single one and what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug this into Your lead coming off of your camera with the wires connected to the controller And what you're then gonna do is you're gonna want to hold that left button down for five seconds And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring you into the part of the controls where you can then go ahead and shut off all the uh OSD on the camera and use the OSD that comes on the Mamba stack. Like I said, um, usually it's pretty much in an obvious spot, but on this one, you had to do it a goofy way. And holding that single stick to the left did not work for me. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of flight footage here for you guys. Now, I took it out to this field's kind of boring as hell, but they're, they're tearing everything out around me. This is one of the highest growing counties in the state of Florida so we're losing land left and right so this particular field has about one tree in it and some uh, palms and that's about it so I'm gonna start you off with uh, a little bit of GoPro in our main window and you can see in the upper left that is from our DVR on the quad itself in or from my goggles and uh, you can see uh, the camera runs pretty darn clean. It is not quite as contrasty as some of these newer cameras. These 1200 TV lines seem to be really contrasty. This is 600. Uh, as far as the flying goes, uh, it's a big open field, you know, and I like those on maidens and after builds uh, just to make sure, you know, if something goes wrong, it's much easier to get to it and find it if it crashes hard and ejects the battery and I lose my beeper or anything like that. So. And uh, I, I don't, I'm not an aggressive flyer. I don't like whipping and flipping. Um, I, I like a little bit slower. Um, got some PID things to work out there. The roll rate's not quite as quick as I need it to be. You'll see on several rolls, I end up about a quarter of the way short on a roll. Um, just, you know, muscle memory to some of my other stuff. I expect it to, to flip a lot harder on the smaller quads. So. But uh, I do like my, my slow cruises like like that roll there. That's that's I like the Ladrib feel. That's kind of my, my dig. I don't fly like Ladrib, not saying that, but I do like that style. So however I do put it through the punch tests. Um and I'm also toward the end I will do a full speed run from end to end of the field and 
it uh, with these motors, you know, being for a, a slower style, uh, you know, I wouldn't call this setup a race setup or whatever, but it's a fun little acro setup. Now, this right here, I'm going to get into. Don't blame the VTX. <laughs> and if you're ever in trouble, punch up. Your, uh, your antennas will pick it back up when you're up. But uh, I had my back turned to it. I don't know why I decided to go over there. What I was thinking, my uh, directional antenna was pointing out to the field, not behind me. So any VTX would have done that. But uh, otherwise, I'm not, you know, end to end of this field. This is a long-ass field, too. And uh, I'm flying all the way out there, and I'm not losing anything. I'm not even getting a twitch. And, and that power fluctuation you see there that is um coming in on the dvr but i didn't have that on my goggles um if i did it was so minute i didn't see it i can tell you that um, i was surprised to see it on the dvr footage so as far as goggles to quadcopter go vtx is great and for 13 dollars, i have several of them and i'm glad i bought several of them because they are going to work out just fine for me and uh Again, some hard punches up, uh, some some pilot error by <laughs> by doing it a little early, which you can see as I even come down to the ground um, when I punch myself out of of smashing the ground that it seems to be handling that just fine and and not um, going into any prop flutter or or anything like that. But overall, I'm pleased with the build. Um, it's it's not my game isn't a lot of five inch. I have done it, can do it. Um, I don't have a lot of space to do it in anymore, which is why the channel has gone a little bit to the smaller ones, but I'm not afraid to put things together and show you guys. Again, this was uh, T40 Motors, the Mamba stack, the 405 stack. It was the Iashin TX805, the Cadex Micro S2, and you know, some printed parts over at Pandemic FTV, my little place for printing parts. And right there, you know, we have a decent flyer. And it was, of course, the uh, the X-Lab Stiz frame, which is like a $70 frame. And I'm not sure, you know, how much any more frames have to do with much, I got to tell you. Any frame seems to, to, as long as you got good parts, seems to run well. But... One last thought for you guys, in case you're wondering, I am running Florian batteries. Uh, maybe you've seen them, maybe you've heard of them. Um, they're cheap as hell, and if you'll notice, we end up with about five minutes of flight time. Now, granted, I'm not racing, and I'm not doing crazy acro stuff, but... Uh, I'm ending at 5 minutes at 3.4, which it bounced back to 14.7 without any grief at all. So, very interesting. So, don't forget, guys, to like, subscribe, and, you know, tell your friends about the channel. Happy flying. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the quadcopter review. If you want to see more interesting reviews on FPV related stuff, take a look up here in the old right corner right there. You'll find links to all the rest of my reviews. If you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube, look over here. Don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin. And if you want to check out my flying only videos separated from the review channel, check that out right here. And thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe and happy flying.